Now to the IRS. There is more trouble tonight. New allegations that former IRS Director Steve Miller was up to his eyeballs in trying to keep the ugly details of the targeting from you. Going so far as to plot a cover-up. Washington Times reporter David Scherfinski joins us. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Greta. Okay, so explain to me where the, uh, the former director of the IRS fits into this scheme of trying to sort of minimize or keep the lid on what happened, uh, what was ultimately exposed at the IRS. Well, according to testimony given to congressional investigators by Holly Paz, essentially Lois Lerner's deputy at the IRS in Washington, uh, Ms. Lerner and Mr. Miller had discussed uh, some sort of plan to kind of roll out um, the unfolding IRS scandal. Uh, Ms. Lerner knew about it at least as early as mid-2011 when, according to the Inspector General's report, when she was briefed on it and essentially said, we have to change these things. So they rolled out this sort of phony thing where, where she, Lois Lerner went to this ABA meeting and she got some lawyer, some woman lawyer who was essentially her patsy, to ask her a phony question. And the phony question was about, about the targeting. And this was all in anticipation of the IG report coming out in a few days. And that sort of plot was also, according to uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Paz, was hatched by the director of the IRS. Well, we don't know those. We don't know those specifics. What we do know from Ms. Paz is that Ms. Lerner and Mr. Miller were talking about how to roll it out. We don't. We, we, we don't know that it was going to take place at that moment in that way. But given that the IG report was about to come out, um, they basically had a choice. You know, try to roll it out in the ultimately awkward way that they did or wait for the IG report to come down and they chose the former and I doubt that they could have foreseen Here, here's the here's blow one up. here's one they missed though in, in sort of hatching their plot as to sort of how to unroll it to try to soften the blow they could have or Miss Lerner in mid 2011 actually could have done the right thing and simply uh, fixed it then well they, I mean to their credit she did say look these uh, these flags, these uh, be on the lookout for terms, uh, Tea Party, 912 group. These are entire. These are un these are inappropriate. Get these out of here in mid 2011. But she knew that there was an IG investigation going on, and as did Mr. Miller, which is why those conversations took place. And I mean, she pled the fifth when she went before the House Oversight Committee because there's an ongoing Department of Justice review, but it also saves her from potential questions from people like, obviously, Daryl Issa or Jim Jordan about this whole scheme, which would, uh, my guess would be incredibly embarrassing, at the very least. Embarrassing, at, I mean, that's sort of mildly to put it to I me. Mean, it's like, you know, there's a, lot of, well, there's a lot of phony stuff going on. I mean, Ms. Paz says we weren't targeting people. It was just sort of using Tea Party. And right, was It right. was sort of like a brand like Kleenex. Right, But, right. but here's, the problem, here's the question. If it was just sort of a brand thing and it really applied to everybody, has anybody at the IRS identified any liberal groups that got this extra scrutiny? I think Ms. Paz said there was at least one. One out of, and how many conservative and Tea Party? Well, I think there were about 300 total um, that were sort of sort of up. hard to buy that it was just a generic term excuse if there was one to 300. But anyway, anyway, David, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Congress grilling FBI Director Robert Mueller over IRS Supervisor Holly Paz just last week during a House Judiciary Committee hearing Congressman Jim Jordan demanding answers. His question, why was Paz sitting in on the investigation into IRS targeting? Here's how it all went down. Well, let me ask you a couple things. Is it typically appropriate for for the investigator to have the central one of the central players in this, Ms. Holly Paz, who was director of one of the one of the key players at the tax exempt division set in on all the interviews almost all the interviews with employees in that division is that typically how an investigation is done uh, i'm not familiar with those circumstances i understand what you're saying about those circumstances so not being familiar with it i can't in your in your in your time as an investigator is that how you would do uh, interviews with the the boss sitting next to the person you're trying to get information from well uh, again i'm is it appropriate I'm, for holly the inspector general came out in, in a transcribed interview uh, that our staff has done the oversight committee staff has done is it appropriate to have her collect the data and give it to 
Uh, the Inspector General? I, I am not familiar with the... If that happened, is that appropriate? I, I, I'm not going to speculate. The latest IRS charade really attempted cover-up is climbing higher. Now everyone is wondering how high up it does go. Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte joins us. Nice to see you, Senator. Good, nice to see you, Greta. Okay, so it's sort of interesting. They're investigating the IRS, and one of the people who knows something about it is this woman named uh, Paz, and mm -hmm. apparently she sat in when they're uh, interviewing the lowers at, uh, in Cincinnati in the IRS. You're a former prosecutor. What do you think about this? I think it's absurd, Greta. You would never conduct an objective investigation that way with someone who is going to be a witness to all of this and also is the supervisor. I mean, think about it. This is the person you report to and you're asking the people to be straight and you might have to implicate her. So, I mean, no one would conduct an investigation this way. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, you know what is, I, th I find peculiar, I confess, is the fact that, um, is that on about the Friday before the IG report came out, which showed the mm. targeting, is that uh, Lois Lerner appears before some meeting at the American Bar Association, something, and she found some patsy, some woman lawyer, and said, right. ask me this question. Right. And, and basically, I mean, I assume maybe you don't, feel, I, I mean, I, I thought that that was a deliberate effort to sort of take the wind out of the sails of the report and make it look not as bad. I think it was a complete setup, and obviously it was completely contrived. So they knew the IG report was coming out. So we're going to announce, you know, you've got bad news coming. You're going to announce it first to try to break uh, the attention on it. But they didn't even announce it. it. They staged this. They did this yeah. funny thing. They had this plot. But they knew it would be picked up, and it was. As you recall, that afternoon it was picked up, and then it went from there. So that they could say they disclosed it themselves first, but that whole thing was so contrived from but, the beginning. But if you listen to what at least the reports are that Paz said in her interview, is that Lois Lerner, that, that according to her, is that Lois, that Lois Lerner said to her that the head of the IRS, Miller, was well aware of this plot. Mm. So I mean, there is nothing to prevent him from going before the cameras and not doing this stupid charade right. and just making the announcement. I mean, that would have been, you know, that would have been more honorable than trying to like. Well, absolutely. Slide I mean, you could see an agency doing that, but to set it up with the agency ABA to have someone ask you a question that you already know the answer to that you're going to give out to make this big announcement and obviously to not have Miller the the director come out and say it I mean the whole thing is not uh, that's why I think the whole thing was just really uh, kind of a charade and how they did does, it. Does it make you more suspicious the way they rolled it out or is it just a sort of clumsy handling of a PR event? I think it makes me more suspicious because it's one thing to clumsily handle a press conference where you're the director or you're the responsible agent, you go out and give it. But to have someone set up asking you a question at a conference, knowing it's going to get picked up and doing it that way, I mean, you think about it, you had to actually plot this out, Greta. It wasn't something where you just clumsily did something. It was all plotted out. Wouldn't you have thought that uh, months before when they first learned of the problem that that would have been a good time to sort of plot out a solution, like to sort of admit what's going exactly. on, come clean and sort of do exactly. the honorable thing? That would have been a much better way to handle it. It would have been a, the best way to handle it. It would have been uh, a much more truthful way to handle it. And frankly, it would have, I think, made people feel less suspicious about what's happening right now. But the more we found out, the more questions there are. I mean, even with the recent testimony of Holly Paz, how it contradicts what Miller and Lerner said about Washington's knowledge about what was happening. They wanted to stick it to Cincinnati. Right, and, exactly. And keep, and keep far. But the other thing that she's reported as saying, and I haven't seen the transcripts myself, but this is Holly Paz, is that, uh, that she, she's reported as saying that um, that she that 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 in sort of rolling this out is that it was there was be, something was being done by others. I mean, she's like she clearly sort of sets herself exonerates herself from this, and she says that you know when we had any discussion, it was about a brand like Kleenex. But then you hear that only one liberal group versus three hundred, according to my last guest. From what I saw, it was she was trying to claim that the term Tea Party was some kind of generic term for just political groups in general which to me just strikes me as very absurd. Nobody would well, buy that, that. That actually wouldn't be so bad if out of the 300 groups, 150 of them or even 120 well, sure, were if liberals. they were balanced, you if could see that. But, but this is, if you look at the groups that were targeted, it's clearly uh, Tea Party, Patriot, 912. And, you know, if you can come up with one, you're lucky. But hundreds on that end. And so you're right. If it were balanced, that we might be able to believe that. But in light of the facts, it just isn't believable. Do you think uh, Lois Lerner is going to be back before the uh, House committee? And uh, do you think she waived her uh, Fifth Amendment or not? I clearly think she waived her Fifth Amendment. You would never let a witness come in in any kind of criminal case, give their side of the story, and not be subject 
to cross-examination and be able to claim your fifth. You know it from trying cases. It just wouldn't happen. I think she really did waive it. Uh, you know, she should. She, what she should have done is just taken the fifth and then gone outside and set her piece on the right. steps. Right. She could have done that, <laughs> but she didn't in. do that. Indeed, yeah. she didn't. Anyway, nice to see you. Thanks, Greta. Great to be with you. Now.